All right, guys, so I already got started with the box. I'll put up some measurements so you can see them. But this is pretty much, um, you're really going by the plexiglass. So the plexiglass here, you could buy in a, is, I don't know if you could see it, but they come in pre-cut 24 inch by 18 inch sheets at about a quarter inch thickness. So when you buy your wood for your ego box, light up box, you want the long side to be the 24 inches, but remember to cut the inside a little bit shorter. I have 16 and a half, so uh, it'll fit on top nicely, you know, perfect size. If you make the inside 18, it's going to be too wide, so keep that in mind. Um, so I already got started before I set up the camera. Uh, I'm just putting a couple screws in the sides just to hold it. Um, make sure, if I was you, I would pre-drill pilot holes with a, I don't know what size bit this is, but um, a 7 64th or a quarter inch, uh, whatever is about the size of the screw. When you drill your pilot holes, it'll keep the wood from splitting when you drill in with the screw. So that, I'll make that easier. And as you can see, I kind of put it up so I could get it sort of square here and then uh, drill a couple holes here and there and then get started. And just change the camera angle a little bit so you can kind of see what's going on also. Alright, so once you get to one side, all three sides, I'm going to flip it over. That will give you a nice even base to work with. And you get started on the top. Now you might notice that I keep taking the drill bit in and out and switching it for the screw bit. Um, if you make all your holes at first, as you're making them, they might move. So you could, it's fine, especially if you, if you have a, some kind of a clamp. I don't have a clamp. So what I do is I just, I'll make one hole like caddy corner and screw that in so it keeps it straight and square and then I'll make the rest. What I also do guys is, you see I'm not going all the way towards the edge. One, as I said, it's easier. You don't want to split the wood and things come loose as it gets kicked around. But also one of the reasons that I don't screw right to the edge is because when you decide where your top's going to be, your bottom, you're going to want to cut up a port for the power supply to go through or the wire because you don't want it to go under the wood, it's going to get pinched, damaged, and then you got to replace it, and it's, you know, wasted money, and plus, it always gets busted before you need it for the big show. So make sure, I'll show you soon, we cut a port after that, so the wire is good. important to note guys as you drill in you don't want to go all the way into the wood because it's going to smush it and especially particle board it's going to push it out so just go to about flush maybe a little less and uh maybe put your drill on a lower setting impact instead of drilling all the way through but we're in good shape So 
So I want to point out the drill I'm using is from, I believe, uh, Home Depot. It's, it's a Ryobi. So this is a power drill. Um, as you can see here, it has a drill setting, which won't stop. So that's a lot of times, that's how you split your wood. You have to be careful. What you want to do is set it to one of these numbers here, which is an impact setting. So after it reaches a certain amount of torque, it stops, the engine stops turning. That'll help protect you from drilling too far and splitting the wood. Pro tip. I'd also like to point out that at this point is probably where you'd want to paint your box. Uh, maybe go with some tin foil or white paint or something bright on the inside to reflect the light. And on the outside, I'm going to go with black because it hides on a dark stage. You can't see it as well, which uh, once it lights up, it, it, it's a cooler look. Um, you could also point it, paint it with your band's colors, logos, uh, put LEDs on the outside, anything. Like I said, I'm going with normal black. Um, I don't have the opportunity to paint it today, so I'm going to do that another time. But now would be the time to paint it. Um, because when you put your plexiglass on top, you're not going to want any paint on that. And when you start wiring things, um, you want to do that after you paint so you don't get any paint on the lights and stuff. But, I mean, you could always tape it off. Do whatever you want. It'll work out. All right, guys. So next, you just decide which tide you want top. So I decided this top, I'm kind of on a carpet here a little bit in my studio, so it wobbles. But normally it wouldn't wobble. So what we're going to do now is we're going to lay out two two by fours for the middle and that'll give us a little bit of um, support for when we jump on the fiberglass. So guys, I also wanted to tell you, as uh, I've said earlier, uh, is that um, I'm in my studio right now putting this together. It's the easiest place to work and um, for me right now. Uh, so I forgot the two by fours at home. So luckily we found some uh, old two bys that I guess somebody threw out. We found them in the garbage and they're ratty. But all you're really doing with this is just supporting the middle of the box with your weight. So, you know, measure them out, cut them to size, and you're good to go. All right, so I have my two boards and replaced them about a, a third of the way each. You know, this way it supports your feet a little bit. So what we'll do here, since I decided that was top, I'm going to put the board up like this so you guys might have a hard time seeing it, but we'll try our best. This doesn't have to be perfect. Let's get them in there. Once we get So like we said earlier, once we get the first two screws, just to hold it in place, we can take a look, square it up. Looks good for my house. Get a second screw in. Like I said, don't go all the way, because you don't want to split the wood. Let's just get the screws in there and then we'll give it a once over. Here's a little helpful tip too if you want. You can take a little bit of painter's tape, splue tape, or duct tape, or any tape really, and you could just tape the wood in place where you want. That'll ensure it doesn't move, and then you could just drill through the tape. So now, all right, so now we have a little bit of a tricky part. Uh, a lot of light-up boxes on YouTube, other instructions say to use like wall fixtures with normal bulbs or LED strip lights, which also work, or those halogen lights, which also work, but they're very fragile and they're very hot. Um, 
I got these, they say beam corn. I don't know, they're about four inches uh, wide or long, or whatever. They're uh, LED floodlights for trucks or boats, headlamps. So they come with these two wires uh, exposed. See, um, and no other and no other power source because they're designed to to be wired into your truck or your car or your boat with the battery there and switched on and off and used as headlamps. Um, the mounting brackets are also strange too, but these are uh, maybe twenty bucks or thirty bucks on Amazon. I'll put the link below. And once you get a power supply for them, which I think is between ten and twenty dollars, uh, five, I believe five volts. Um, you just wire them up to the switch and to the power supply and plug it in and it works fine. Um, and they're pretty, they're pretty bright and they're durable because they're for trucks and outdoor. Uh, so you won't break them, you won't fog them, you won't, um, they won't come loose, they're pretty secure. You can jump on them, throw them in and out of trucks, throw them on stage, kick them around and they'll be fine. Uh, the halogens break a lot, so you can use them, they're great, but they do break, you end up having to replace the bulb which you have to unbracket it, get in there, it's a pain in the ass. And um, the regular light fixtures are fine, but they're not as bright. These are pretty bright and focused. Um, I'd also like to point out that since they're for lights for trucks, they come with these round attachments um, that sit very nice on the side of the light and then bracket into your grill or whatever. So when you do put it in into your light box, um, they're designed to slide. So just make sure you put them in the right way so they're facing up, obviously, at your feet, not down towards the floor, and you tighten them pretty good so they stay where they are. Um, cool. All right, guys, so I changed the camera angle up a little bit, as you can see, because I kept having to reach over to move it, whatever, it doesn't fucking matter. Well, what does matter is I will make a little change to the box. I put the four buys up flat like this. They're not staying this way. They're gonna go back down the way we had them earlier. But I realized to put the brackets in with the gun, it would be much easier if you put them flat like this, attach the lights so you can drill straight down, put the lights in, fold it down, put the screw back, back in. So um, there's a pro tip for you. Okay, so this top side of the two by four is going to be the, on the outside of the box. So I'm gonna put my two lights on the outside. Um, so when you step in the middle, it kind of illuminates from the side. I'm going to see how that looks. Um, so I'm going to position, you have to put the bracket on first, then attach the light. So what I'm going to do is position the bracket where, uh, where, uh, where, uh. All right, guys, so as you can see, this is the top. The lights are going to go on the side. So make, you want to position the light so when you turn the 2x4 down, it points up. I'm putting mine on the outside, so when I step on it, it lights up. However, you can't screw this onto the light and then onto here. So we have to make a couple measurements. So what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to fix the light to the bracket first. Then we'll use a pen or a marker to mark where we're going to screw this in. Take the fog light off the bracket, screw the bracket in, and then attach the light back on. So, like I was saying earlier, is these are the fog lights, these are the brackets. Um, you put the brackets on the lights, and as you can see, once they're on, there's really no room for a drill. So what we did was we laid them out where they're going to be, into the wood, marked the wood out where the lights would sit comfortably, and remember, this is the outside, and it's going to turn down. So if we put the bracket on like this, the light goes there, the light faces up. You want to be facing up towards your feet. All right, so we're going to put that bracket there. I started marking it out, but for the camera, I'll make a larger mark. So I'd also like to point out that the bracket here, since it's made for a truck, it comes with a bolt, just like this, and a nut, and you're supposed to bolt the bracket into where it goes on the truck but um since I didn't buy bigger screws and we're going into wood we could take a chance bolting this into the wood 
And to be honest, it would probably be fine, but I think we're gonna use a screw instead. Just a regular wood screw we're using for everything else with a couple washers on it to give it a little bit of space. Cause they're, uh, they're about the same size and um, it fits into the two by, it'll hold nicely and we'll just space it out. So what I also do is, for the bolt, this came with a washer and a locking washer. So I have my multi-tool here. As you can see, it's a very tiny multi-tool. I recommend that every guitar player or musician or anybody keep a little one of these in their bag because you have a screwdriver, Phillips slat, pliers, string cutters, bottle opener, anything. And it fits in your gig bag pretty easily. So we're just gonna squeeze this locking nut closed a little bit more. And then that'll fit on the screw fairly well. We made our marks for our brackets. So we're just gonna drill those pilot holes. Now since since these holes, these, these bolts are gonna be smaller than the um, than the bolts. The screws are smaller than the bolts. So you can go dead center of that hole. You're going to have wiggle room. So if you're off, don't worry about it. Um, I would err on closer to the bottom um, than the top. So that's what I'm going to try doing here. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put the locking washer on the nut first, I mean on the screw first. Then we're going to put the washer on the screw. And as you can see that'll, that'll hold pretty good. You're going to probably end up bending that, that washer a little bit, but that's okay. Alright. Same thing on the other side, take the washer, we're gonna pinch it down a little bit. Ah, shit. There goes that one. Okay, so that's screwed in there. Now what the fog lights give you is these little bolts that is fix the bracket to the lights. And they are, I don't know if you can see that, hex or an Allen key, which they provide. And they also give you one flat washer, one locking washer, and the nuts for this bolt are in the light as you can see. So what I like to do here is I'm going to flip that wood up, position this this way, I mean this way. <laughs> so when it goes down the light is facing up but I'm gonna put that wood upside down to make it easier for me to reach. Again the lights provide their own Allen key, so don't lose this. I believe you also get two per package, one in each plastic bag, so if you do lose one, there's another one for you. As you can see, the light's gonna face up when it's all said and done. Again, we'll do uh, pretty much the same thing to the other side. I'll just zoom in a little bit so you guys can see what's going on a little better.
<laughs> also guys when you put these in you want to take a look at the lights to make sure they are I guess perpendicular with the wood or pointing straight up you don't want them pointing into the 2x because then you're going to get a shadow and you don't want them pointing too much away because it's not really going to illuminate you you're going to get the best out of it if it's going straight up so as you can see once we tighten these up as we tighten them up they're pointing straight up this is going to be the front of our box so when you step on it from the back side it'll illuminate your guitar and your face and the front of you for pictures and stuff you don't want the back because you're going to be in shade so make sure again you put it in the front of your box okay guys so this next step is a little trickier um, you're going to use this momentary switch on off you can use this eye hook and the momentary switch you can see has a nut on it this little nut so unscrew that put it through your eye hook it should fit pretty snug and then the nut goes back on top and that'll hold it in place this is the tricky part is that um, what you want to do is kind of hook this up and then take a measurement where the button's going to be when you stand on it so where I like to put it is uh, I would kind of put it towards the middle here um, because you figure you're going to stand on the box kind of in the middle you want your foot to depress that the most I would also um, what I like to do is I put this rubber foam people use for air conditioners and stuff I put that on top so when you jump on the box it kind of softens the blow so it's not the momentary switch isn't going to be flush with this wood you want to put it just just a little bit higher so so I do it by eye um, I'm gonna do it by eye there's, there's probably an easier way to do it to be honest um, but I, I'm a guitar player not not a carpenter but so I'm doing my best but I just measure it out I'm gonna make a mark with a pen drill the pilot hole like we've been doing and then put the put the switch in also guys again for ease of use you can see that's where I marked my hole right here so I'm going to turn it the board up like we've been doing so I could drill straight down and guys listen if you do make a mistake don't beat yourself up about it you know if you break the wood it happens it's wood it happens just drill another hole someplace else and take a different measurement it's alright Guys, and if you're having trouble turning that that eye hook, just use the Allen key for leverage. The further you are, the more leverage you have, and it'll be easier to twist. All right, guys. So this is the power source for the fog lamps. Like I said, the fog lamps are for trucks, and they hook up to the battery of your car to turn on and off. So you have to buy an external power, pa an external power or battery. Um, this I got, it's an AC unit, so it plugs into the wall. AC means alternating current, and it translates, uh, you know, the power from um, your wall to the battery for these lights. So, um, all right, so as you can see, that comes with the power unit is the, um, I don't know, the box transformer I don't know what this is but whatever this unit with the plug and this barrel pin and then you have the plug part that goes into the wall this might be the same for you know pedal boards and stuff and then you have this unit that grabs the light the little wires on the light and turns them into a barrel plug so you could plug this into it like that so what we what we want to do is take the wires from the light so 
you can see these uh, red and black wires. Right. We're going to affix them into here so they can be powered by the barrel plug, but we're going to put one side into the momentary switch. So I'll show you how to do that now. We have some regular electrical wire. We have some vinyl electrical tape. And we have these plastic caps we're going to use to try and help us out from getting shot. Okay, guys. So I needed both my hands to work. Um, as you can see here, what I did was I basically just put the two put the two blacks together and I capped them with this little orange cap and I put some tape on it just to hold it. Then the other end of the black is going to go with this end of the white wire is going to attach to your momentary switch and then on one end of the momentary switch which would be here and then another wire is going to go from here to the power supply and then the red the red wire here that's going to get spliced together and go straight to the power supply. That completes your circuit. I'm not really going to show you that here because you could just look that up on YouTube, attaching wires. It's not really the most difficult thing in the world. Here's another thing I just want you guys to be aware of is when you cut your extra electrical cord, keep in mind where you're going to put that little, uh, I seem to have misplaced but keep in mind where you're going to put this thing because if that's the front of your box and this is the back you might want to affix it to the back so you can run it through the side to plug into the wall so you're going to want to tape this to the box so it's not just not hanging willy nilly to catch on something so give yourself enough line so you can tape this where it has to go also gang you can see that I don't know if you can see, but I'm using this uh, vinyl tape to keep the uh, keep the cables attached to the wood. You use staples. Staples are a better choice. I just don't have staples right now. Okay, I forgot to mention this earlier, but we put our power source here. Uh, this is the bottom of the box, so I would make a notch out on the side. So you could put your power cord through without it being on the bottom of the box and getting uh, chopped up and cut off. All right, as you can also see, I flipped the board back up and I put those screws back in to make those two by fours upright for support. Make sure you tighten the top. When you put the bottoms in, tighten the tops up because they probably became loose as well. All right, as you might be able to tell here is we put the plexiglass on top. It's not exactly square the box. You know, um, so we have a little overhang here, a little overhang there. It's really not a big deal, you know. It's not perfect, whatever. The plexiglass might not be cut square. You don't really know. But what we're going to do is we're going to drill holes in the plexiglass where we want it to go into the board. Then we're going to take it off and make those holes bigger so the screws we use, it doesn't catch on the screws. I mean, you could also... Uh, you could see that the screws have the top here um, that's enough for the plexiglass you just want to make it so this doesn't touch this is going to go into the wood this you want not to touch uh, I forgot to record sorry guys but I drilled holes one two three four five six and uh, that should be good but I put one on that end too and uh, it's a little shy over here so I'm going to put one more hole there what we're going to do too is we're going to use a marker and we're going to mark out where our holes are because then when we put the rubber sealant on top, we're going to need to know where those holes are. We're also going to make these holes bigger on the fiberglass so the screws fit through. Okay, gang. Oop. Yikes. All right, guys. So, unfortunately, the camera died. And um, basically what I did was I put the plexiglass on top, measured the holes. I drilled out a hole larger than the screw itself. So with the foam here, um, 
This thing isn't going to rattle. The plexiglass is not going to move around. It's not going to rattle. It's not going to fall off. Uh, nothing's going to get caught under it. And it, it makes a nice little seal um, with the rubber insulation. However, with the momentary switch in the middle, there's enough play in the screws. So when you do jump on it, you're on. Sorry, camera, but so we put it on the right so you can jump on, and then if you want to get off there, um, uh, so like I said with the light box, um, as you can see when I jumped on and off, it turns on with the right foot and off with the left foot. So if you want to do some kind of strobe effect, um, if not, you can always put that eye hook a little higher and it'll go on all the time. Um, you can cut out the rubber seal from the middle. I put it in the middle. Um, if you don't want that, it'll go on easier. That's just what I like to do. And uh, obviously, you can tell I didn't paint it yet or anything like that. I'm going to do that later. I just wanted to get it set up so you guys could see. Pretty sure you know how to use spray paint. And if you don't, uh, sorry, figure it out. Um, so that's the glass, and we'll take uh, one more look at it.